promising. Now, uh, let me turn to uh, Livia Rivere de Souza. Uh, li uh, Livia, uh, you, you are um, co founder and chief technology officer of Minicrete, a spin off of uh, Cambridge University. And uh, you're working on a self healing concrete solution. So, again, inspired by nature. Can you tell us more about that? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, to begin with, thanks for the invitation to be in this event. Um, it's I'm very flattered and good afternoon, everybody. So bear with me on a little bit of science in this afternoon. Um, but we are going to start talking about why there are so many cracks in concrete. And what happened is concrete, it's widely used. And it's, uh, that's because it's widely available as well, but also because it's very good under compressive load, but not as good under tensile load. And that's why typically we place rebars inside of concrete to kind of balance out a little bit of those tensile forces. However, if small cracks are formed, what happens is um, contaminants can enter in the concrete and uh, corrosion can take place in the rebar. And that's why typically when you go to coastal areas, you can see much more corrosion or corroded surface uh, together with um, in the UK, in the winter, they put salt in the roads as well, and that chloride can escalate the process of corrosion. Um, and with a result of that, what happens is that a lot of money is spent on repair and maintenance actions. And that's a problem because then what we are talking about, um, as we all know, is that cement is one of the fundamental materials used in the production of concrete. And during the production of cement, it's around seven to um, eight percent of CO2 emissions during the calcination process. And um, there are a lot of projects to use less cement, like calcined clays or um, blast furnace slag. Um, but uh, still, there is no clear alternative to it, to it quite yet. And with the growth in population, we know that um, the number of use of concrete is just going to increase. And we also know that 37% of um, CO2 emissions are associated with the total built environment, and that together with actions of repair and maintenance. So um, in the past 10 years or so in, at Cambridge, we're investigating um, self-healing technology for cementitious materials. And that's, again, um, similar to what Bruno was saying. It's mimicking what happens in nature. So if there is a scratch on a tree or there is a scratch on our own skin, there is a self-healing capacity in our own body. And nature has that capacity as well. So um, we are mimicking that. We are borrowing that lesson and applying that for um, our infrastructure. And the way we do it is by embedding healing agents inside of the uh, infrastructure, either in discrete elements as capsules or in continuous systems as a vascular system to deliver the healing agent. And, um, and with that, we can extend the service life of the infrastructure because we are decreasing all actions that could be associated with repair and maintenance of that infrastructure. Um, we tested that system in the lab, and it's um, showing a lot of potential, but now um, we started Mimicrete to investigate pathways for commercializing that technology, particularly focusing on the scaling up, but also establishing partnerships to de-risk the technology in, um, in, in application in the relevant environment. And the results that we see with this kind of technology is that it's kind of twofold. On one side, we can see the decrease of actions that are associated with repair and maintenance. But then on the other side, we have outcomes like if you go back to the um, why the steel, why the rebar is needed in concrete. Um, by enhancing the capacity of concrete of heal itself and close those cracks, cracks by itself, uh, we can decrease the amount of steel that it's used. And um, we have reports saying that we can decrease the amount of steel of up 35%, which is um, quite a pronounced number for in terms of sustainability. And we are also keen on investigating how we can decrease the amount of cement that can be used once that um, self-healing technology is deployed. 
That's absolutely uh, astonishing. Uh, minus 35% steel, length and duration uh, for uh, the material itself. Uh, a wonderful example of a uh, new approach, how innovation can help on sustainability. And uh, these two examples are, are part of the biomimetic technologies, which is impressive because they are um, inspired by nature.